enemies, it's a different kind of animal, and you gotta do different sort of things. In an academy training session, you have full time, two hours in the morning on court, eight to 10, off court, 11 to three. Normally you work on stroke production, you make it harder in the morning, and in the afternoon you do competition, because they're tired, so you do other things. Um, between 11 and 3, you can do a number of different things. Yoga, swimming, relaxation, weights. Um, they can do film editing or you can have class if they're, they're in school. The two-hour session usually works on a specific shot or item that, that is player-specific. You focus on the needs of that individual player. And you use the group setting in the afternoon, the three hours, when you play other players to see what's not working. Normally, it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday court time. Tuesday, 30, maybe the off, in the morning you do off-court sessions. It's hard to play five hours a day for five days a week. But you got to judge on what you can do with your player and your program. But having to split on Tuesday, Thursday with weights and conditioning is an important part of playing tennis also. You need to make your plans so that your sessions balance out what the player needs. Assuming they have a tournament coming up, Maybe Monday and Friday are lighter. Um, the morning sessions are normally dead ball. They're normally physically difficult because they have more energy in the morning. Um, you want to balance it out with the level of your player. You really work on different shots. And in a two hour session, like you have half an hour to warm up, maybe another half an hour to work on something, maybe half an hour to work, work on that thing in a live ball situation, and then half an hour to kind of cool down. You want to train harder than you play in a two-hour session so that the player can be fresh in the afternoon and they're more fresh in the morning. You can work on a weapon, work on movement, work on a technical issue, try to change something. That's the key to the morning sessions. The afternoon sessions match play competition where you do tactical analysis. You create game plan and tactics where they work in larger groups. It's also a good time to condition too. It might be cooler in the afternoon. And work on playing issues. Watch them play each other. Because oftentimes when you play with a player, you hit to what they like. So when they play with their friends, there's no, there's none of that control. You control the sessions, so make sure you make it time to work. And you really put an effort into having a long-term plan developing your game. The afternoon session can be large ladder matches. Um, I believe that large group training and conditioning is a lot better than small groups. And when they play, make sure it's serious, like you have to have a penalty or something, so they kind of create some sort of pressure. Academy training should be streamed in competition, meaning that good players play with each other and bad players play with each other. But you can level it, they can condition all together. You want to separate the competitive players, the recreational players, the adults, the visiting teams from each other. You might have interaction in terms of small competitions, but in order to compete in tennis, you want the match to be about 6-3. There's rarely, rarely any value between a 6-0 match. If you must have different levels playing each other, you handicap the higher level players by limiting what they can do. Maybe one serve. I prefer one serve over point penalties. Uh, competitive groups are normally separated by tournament ranking and head-to-head, -head. so you create like entrance requirements to upper levels. Um, when they're recreational, you want to separate them based on age and ability, and you want to have like a large group hitting session where you start to evaluate the players and separate them based on age and ability. And when they get older, it's normally age, sex, and ability. But sometimes it blends when you don't have serves. If they're just hitting, girls can hit with girls, but when you start adding serves, it creates bigger separation. You do want to have a sense of fun in the academies and what makes academies work is large groups of talented players pushing the level of everyone else up. So it's not uncommon to see an older player come in and play the junior players just for experience. The older players tend to play smarter and have more, st more strategic things they're doing while the younger players tend to play more power and straight up. Visiting teams have their own agenda so their schedule responds as such. So they don't get ready for a tournament, or they came to work on their singles game, or they came to work on their doubles game. You set that up with the visiting team. But in your academy, if it's run properly, you have many different levels, and that allows you the flexibility to do different things.
I think having a visiting team come in and playing a local tournament is really good for that visiting team. Because it has a goal at the end. Or you create your own tournament at the end where you mix in other players, people they don't know. Uh, your academy should be financially based. So therefore, you need to have sponsors and the better players have their own sponsors. And the younger players are trying to get into the better player groups and get their sponsorships and get, get, get into more intensive training. But you need to have levels or gates, ways to control how they move up and down here in, in your academy. Parents are going to be a problem, so you have to be very firm in how you deal with things. Credibility in your academy is very important to have a successful academy. And the high performance groups can just reflect the tournament schedule. Don't change serves before tournament. Uh, rec programs can follow standard one week, week one forehand, week two backhand, etc. Someone was asking me, like, how do you run like uh, an academy? And normally, if you have an academy, you have a very large campus. Um, you can have dorms, and you're gonna also have to have like the option to uh, have the player there all day. And when you have the player there all day, normally you do two days, like you do like a morning schedule two hours, afternoon schedule for three hours. Um, the morning schedule normally what you do is you just have them come out, and you'll have them train, work on strokes. And the afternoon session that you have in play, um, depending on what kind of cam you want to have. So we're going with competitive cam first. So two hours in the morning, they train, normally match uh, stroke play. Uh, they work on a stroke, they work on something. And the afternoon, they have match play. The schedule is normally like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, stroke play, match play. And then in uh, Tuesday, Thursday, you do conditioning in the afternoon and have some match play. And the morning session still stroke play okay the concept is that the morning they have more energy and it'll be easier for them to play harder in the morning so your your training practices in the morning tend to be harder training practices one of the biggest concerns too is when you run an academy is to have placement by level and you can base it on several things the easiest way to do it is by age and then by level because you don't want to have someone that's 10 years old playing with someone that's 18 years old. Even if the 10 year old can, can sustain that rally or beat that 18 year old, because it's, it's not a good thing for the 18 year old. It won't work out either way. You might have it occasionally, but to have it all the time, it creates a lot of social disruption. Um, the easy way to do it is you just have them warm up and play on courts and you just compare. And based on their ability, you move them around. When you do this placement, it has to be rather quickly. You don't want them to form bonds. You don't want them to get used to a group. Because some players prefer the friendly environment and they'll choose to just be with a group even though they're too good for that group. Okay, So you want to disrupt the groups as early as possible and place them accordingly. On the concept of periodization or cycling, what you need to do is when you're running an academy for competitive patterns or players, you need to set up a schedule so like in hawaii there are like four major tournaments there's there's a winter sectionals in march there's a state tournament in may there's a summer sectionals that's like in july august there's a championships like in in september so you want to make your training and taper it towards the end so a player plays something in march you can change strokes and change technique in january and they can work on it for two months before the tournament and then use it at the tournament um, you go harder in the beginning, you do more weights in January than you would do in the playing session. So in March, you go easy on the weights and you go easy on the running because you want the legs to be fresh. Um, just like the training, like you go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but Monday and Friday tend to be looser days. They're, they're a little bit more mellow because you're assuming you're playing a tournament on the weekend. Tuesday, Thursday, you can go harder in terms of physical. That's why you do conditioning on Tuesday and Thursday.